Well, good morning. Can everybody hear me okay? I think everybody, raise your hand if you can hear me. I think most everybody can hear me. I want to make sure before we begin. Good to see each and every one of you this morning. I know we're doing things a little bit differently uh, than we're accustomed to, but uh, praise the Lord, we can still come uh, together as brothers and sisters in Christ and uh, worship together and be an encouragement to one another. One of the things that we typically do every week is to recognize any birthdays or anniversaries, and we may have to wait on that just a moment till Joy gets back to, to, to her desk. Uh, so we'll come back to that in just a second. Um, as far as right now, we'll go ahead and take uh, some prayer requests. We know Miss Terry Sanders is still scheduled for her surgery, so y'all remember her. Also, let's continue to remember those who've been affected by the coronavirus, uh, those that are working uh, on a treatment, those who are, of course, uh, treating uh, patients, those that are on the front lines, and we want to continue to pray for you and your health as well, that God would put a hedge of protection around you and protect you and your family also. At this time, let's go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer. Would you bow in prayer with me, please? Father in heaven, we come now and we just thank you and we praise you for all of your many blessings. Lord, we realize that there is a pandemic that's going on around the world, but Lord, we're so thankful that you have protected us thus far. And Lord, we realize that you are eternal and this coronavirus is temporary. And Lord, as we meet outside today, Lord, we thank you for every man and woman, teenager, boy and girl that's uh, present here on these grounds. Lord, might you bless them in a special way. Lord, thank you for their faith in coming out. And Lord, we, we realize that uh, there are mixed emotions about things going on uh, today and various opinions, but Lord, your truth is all that matters. And so Lord, we come this morning to focus on you. Lord, we come this morning to be encouraged, to be challenged, and to have our faith increased by the reading and studying of your word. Lord, I bless our time together, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, birthdays. Uh, just kind of toot your horn once or twice if you had a birthday this past week or have one coming up this week or anniversaries. Birthdays and anniversaries. <laughs> All right, we've got some spread about, so uh, let's go ahead and sing happy birthday to these. I think we've got a song. You don't want to hear me sing it, so I'll pull the microphone away while we sing. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. birthday and happy anniversary so at this time uh, I think uh, the girls are going to come and sing they're a little nervous they haven't sang in front of everybody in quite a while and uh, so but they practiced for since yesterday so this isn't something they've been working on for a while but if they'll come at this time and I think they're going to sing a cappella for us I've been 
been so, so kind to me. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. I couldn't earn it, and I don't deserve it. Still you give yourself away Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God Yeah When I was your foe, still you love fall for me You have been so, so good I felt no worth, you paid it all for me. You have been so, so kind to me. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found. Leaves the 99 I couldn't earn it And I don't deserve it Still you give yourself away Oh, the overwhelming Never-ending Reckless love of God Yeah! It's no shadow you won't climb up coming after me there's no wall you won't kick down lie you won't tear down coming after me there's no shadow you won't light up mountain you won't climb up coming after me there's no wall you won't kick down lie you won't tear down coming after me Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. And I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it. Still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, As we did from the beginning, we promised to keep these uh, as brief as possible, so that's what we want to do. I know some of you may have children in the car, and uh, if you're in the sun, it may get a little warm, and we'll plan to do this for now. Um, we don't know for how long just yet. It just depends on this virus and how things come about as time goes on. It may be that certain areas of the country are given different uh, levels of risk and that we may be able to return to some normal activities. We'll just have to wait and see. But in the meantime, we'll plan to do this. Decisions will normally not come until around Thursday uh, for a couple of reasons, depending on what the government is doing. And then secondly, depending on the weather, if it's uh, you know a heavy rain or something like that, send the forecast and it would be difficult uh, to do this. So uh, typically you, you won't know for sure until maybe Thursday or Friday on what we may be doing for that particular uh, week. Uh, hopefully you got a handout uh, this morning that was passed around and that'll uh, serve as our study uh, this morning and sort of help accompany that in the sermon. And we appreciate you joining us. As I said here on the lawn, those that may be joining on uh, YouTube or Facebook um, as well. And so if you have your Bibles, uh, we're going to look at a couple of uh, scriptures. First from Hebrews chapter 11 and then also from Exodus chapter 2. But also on that handout, the scriptures have already been printed for you so that you can follow along there. 
And last week we began to talk about faith. And we talked about overcoming in Jesus Christ. And so, uh, you know, we don't know much about our faith until it's tested. And we don't know, you know, what's, what is the test? We, found, we find out what kind of foundation our faith is built on when the storm comes. And we talked about that on Wednesday night a month or two ago. Whenever the wind starts to blow and the rain starts to fall, then you find out what kind of foundation your faith is built on. And so how we respond and we find out what we're made of when adversity comes in our lives. And so, you being here today is a testimony of your faith, of turning to the Lord in a time of need, in a time of uncertainty. So, uh, we certainly uh, thank you. And of course, that's commendable on your part. And for this study, I'd like for us to uh, first look in Hebrews chapter 11 as we look to the hall of faith. The hall of faith and I want to read one verse there, and then as I said, we'll turn back to Exodus chapter 2 to read about an account in which it says, Behold, the babe wept. The babe wept. And that's when baby Moses was discovered in a basket in a river. And again, you can follow along with a handout, but first from Hebrews chapter 11, verse 23, here's what the Word of God says. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was he at three months of his parents. His mother was Jochebed, and his father was Amram. Because they saw that he was a proper child, an unusual child, a beautiful child, and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. I want you to pay attention this morning carefully as we go through this study. If we've been in church much at all, then we know that the Israelites had it rough during their time in Egypt after the death of Joseph. And so they were overworked as slaves. They were treated harshly. And the Pharaoh, the ruler of the land there in Egypt, is inflicting God's people with pain day after day. And the conditions are severe for His people. Do you know God has a solution for any problem that we face. And God will raise up a man named Moses to go and confront the Pharaoh to release his people. But if we were rewind several years before that, if we look at a time before that, we can miss a great story of faith, which is what we're going to look at today. In times like these, studying the courageous faith of those who have walked before us can greatly encourage us as well. So I would like to put the spotlight this morning on the parents of Moses, particularly his mother, Jochebed. And in Exodus chapter 2, we find an extraordinary display of faith. And I believe this morning that as we look at this, our own faith will be challenged. And if you will pay attention carefully, I believe our faith can increase from reading and looking at this story. As I said, it's one thing to talk about faith, you may say, Jeffrey, show me an example in the Bible of someone who had faith. And that's what we'll see now in this godly woman named Jochebed. Again, Exodus chapter 2, and this is what the Word of God says. And I'm just going to read straight off the sheet the same thing that was handed out to you. Now a man, that is Amram, from the family of Levi, married a Levite woman, that is Jochebed. And the woman became pregnant and gave birth to a son. When she saw that he was beautiful, she hid him for three months. But when she could no longer hide him, she got a papyrus basket for him and coated it with asphalt and pitch. She placed the child in it and set it among the reeds by the bank of the Nile. Then his sister stood at a distance in order to see what would happen to him. Pharaoh's daughter went down to bathe at the Nile River while her servant girls walked along the river bank. She saw the basket among the reeds, sent her slave girl, took it, opened it, and saw him, the child. And there he was, a little boy crying. She felt sorry for him and said, This is one of the Hebrew boys. Then his sister 
that is Miriam, Moses' sister, said to Pharaoh's daughter, Should I go and call a Hebrew woman who is nursing to nurse the boy for you? Go, Pharaoh's daughter told her. So the girl went and called the boy's mother. Then Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child and nurse him for me, and I will pay your wages. So the woman took the boy, that is Moses, and nursed him. And when the child grew older, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. She named him Moses because she said, I drew him out of water. Let's break this down verse by verse now so that we can see what is going on here. We see the family tree first in Exodus chapter 2 verse 1, the family tree of Moses' parents. They were Hebrews of Levi's tribe. That is both of them, Jochebed and Amram. So they were slaves of the lowest social rank. And Moses' parents, they would have worked like animals. They were abused. They were beaten, they were poor, and had little to nothing. And since the spotlight is on this mother this morning, think about her for just a moment. She had nothing. She had absolutely nothing. She was a slave. She worked endless hours to make someone else rich. Yet God will honor this woman. He will use this woman, this humble mother. She will give birth to one of the greatest men to ever live on the face of the earth. And this reminds us, this reminds you, and this reminds me that God can use anybody, especially humble people. We don't have to have great abilities, that is, great talents. We don't have to have a broad social circle and have lots of popularity. We don't even need a vast bank account for God to use us. So why is this woman found in that famous hall of faith in Hebrews chapter 11, because she believed in God and she trusted in God. Well, what did she do, you ask? Well, let's look at verse 2 again. Here's what it says. The woman became pregnant and gave birth to a son. And when she saw that he was beautiful, she hid him for three months. You may ask, what's so significant about this? You see, God was with the Israelites. God was with His people while they were in captivity in Egypt. And they kept multiplying and they became more and more numerous. And this made Pharaoh, the Egyptian Pharaoh, again, he was the ruler in the land in Egypt. This made him very nervous. They were starting to outnumber his own people, you know. So he issued an order in Exodus chapter 1, verse 22. And here's what he says. Any of those Hebrew boys, when they are born, they are to be thrown into the Nile River to drown. The girls you may keep. Now this order came shortly before Moses was born. Keep in mind that Moses is Jacobed's third child. There was Miriam, the older daughter. She was probably around 14 years old at this time. There's also Aaron. Moses' older brother, who's about three years old now. So the king has issued a command. He has issued a law in the land. And this was not in effect before, but it is now. Any baby boys that are born from here on out are to be thrown into the Nile River. Think about it. Suppose you were Jacobin, Moses' mother. How upsetting would it be whenever this law has been issued, to discover that you are now expecting a child. The fear, the uncertainty. What are we going to do, Amram, if this baby is a boy? The Pharaoh has said we must throw him into the Nile River. Moses' parents must have prayed and prayed for guidance with no modern day sonogram to determine the baby's gender month after month, week after week, day after day. Perhaps these parents are praying, Lord, what are we going to do if this baby's a boy? Perhaps they even pray, Lord, please let the baby be a girl. You may be facing something today. It may be related to the coronavirus. It may be related to something else. But day after day, you may be asking the Lord to 
give you some wisdom, to give you understanding. And what seems to be staring you in the face doesn't seem like a good option. You're like, what do I do, Lord? Well, the day finally came. And verse 2 tells us, the baby is a boy. Their worst fears have become a reality. Moses is born. And this mother loves this baby. And she feels that it's her natural duty and instinct to protect her baby. Even the animals of the wild protect their own. The Bible says that she hid him for three months. Her faith in God is on display here. It's dangerous to go against what the law says. And she hid the child from the authorities and any neighbors, anyone who might tell. She hid the child and she risked her own life. She was a courageous woman. She was a righteous woman. But she cannot hide this baby forever. She must be praying, Lord, give me something. Tell me something. She has to come up with a plan. But you know, God gives wisdom to those who ask. James 1.5 says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that gives to all men liberally. Verse 3, now the Bible says she could no longer hide him. We don't know exactly why, but perhaps the Egyptian authorities, authorities were periodically checking homes. Maybe there was a reward for any nosy neighbors that may tell. Who knows? Of course, it would be noticeable if you had a child that was starting to grow up to know that they were in that age range. So Moses' mother must now act in faith. What can she do to save her baby boy? The Bible says that she placed the baby boy in a basket made of papyrus and placed it among the reeds of the Nile River. The only way this baby could be saved would be if one of the Egyptian royalty were to come down to the river, discover that baby, and have compassion upon that baby, and keep that baby as their own. You see, Jacobi, Moses' mother, was poor. There was nothing she could do. She was of a lower social class. She was nothing by society standards. She could not even save her own son's life. Remember Miriam, the oldest child. Jacobi instructs Miriam, this teenager, to go and stand and watch from a distance and see what happens when we lay this basket there among the reeds on the Nile River. You see, Jacobea cannot control the situation. Much like us today, we can't control the situation. As a mother, all Jacobea could do is pray and trust God to work it all out. But is there really a better plan than that for you and me today? There are times that things happen that are beyond our control. Our spouse may leave us. Our children may get on the wrong path. The stock market may plummet. Someone that we love may become seriously ill. In those times, we are to pray faithfully and we are to trust God to work it out all according to His plan, not our own. And she probably had many questions. Why did our baby have to be a boy, Lord? Why do we have to live here in this place? Why does the Pharaoh have to be so evil? Lord, I, I'm trying to serve you. I'm one of your children. But yet, I'm in this difficult place in my life. They're wanting to kill my baby boy. As I said at the beginning, we find out what we're made of when storms come in life. This wise and faithful woman named Jochebed is up to the test. You see the hand of God is guiding this woman. God has a special plan for this baby boy in the future. And God will watch over and protect this baby as he lays in that basket there on the Nile River. So the baby is placed in a basket laid into the Nile River as Miriam the sister the older sister watches from a distance to see 
what will happen. Verse 5. Look who comes along. Of all people. Who shows up and discovers this basket? Pharaoh's daughter. The princess shows up. Is this a coincidence? I think not. Pharaoh's daughter came to the Nile River to bathe. And she sees this basket off in the distance. And she's curious as to what is in this basket. And she sends one of the nearby slave girls to wade out into the water and to fetch the basket for her. And in verse 6, the Bible says, and I like how the King James Version words it, when she had opened it, that is the basket, she saw the child. And behold, the babe well. And she had compassion on him and said, this is one of the Hebrews' children. When she opened the basket, the baby began to cry. And this melted that princess, Pharaoh's daughter's heart. And she had compassion for him. And she knew this was a Hebrew baby, according to the Bible. So what does Moses' older sister Miriam now do according to verse 7? She displays some courage here as well. She approaches. She sees that Pharaoh's daughter has spotted and has now seen Moses in this basket. And so Miriam walks up and she poses a question to Pharaoh's daughter. Do you want me to go and, and find a Hebrew woman to nurse this baby, this child for you? And this prompted Pharaoh's daughter to answer, yes, go. So who does Miriam go and get? Jacobin, her mother, the baby's mother, the child's mother, Moses' mother, of course. Pharaoh's daughter says, take care of this child. Nurse him for me, and I'll pay him. Look what God does. He saves this child. And now Moses' mother is getting paid to take care of her own baby. And later as the baby boy grew, Jochebed did bring the baby back to Pharaoh's daughter. And she named him Moses, meaning I drew him out of water. And you say, Jeffrey, why share this story today? What does this have to do with us? What does it have to do with me and what I'm facing this morning? How does this affect my faith today in God? Why do I need to hear this great story of faith? Because from time to time, especially in this time, we need to be reminded that God is sovereign. That God is supreme. That God is in control. He is the creator of heaven and of earth. And He has absolute authority to do whatever He pleases and however He pleases to do so. And as someone has said, God's Spirit was hovering all around that little basket that was floating on the Nile River that day because there was a special baby boy lying in it. I want you to think for just a moment of the providence of God in all of this. How God worked all of this out for the good for those who were involved, but also for His glory. Those reeds held that basket in place close to that shore because otherwise that basket would have floated downstream. So that was one thing that God did. No dangerous crocodiles swam over and, and attacked the child as that baby lay there in that basket on the Nile River. Pharaoh's daughter, the princess herself, came to bathe the very person that most likely these parents have been praying to come for some time the very person that they prayed would show up is the very one that god sent on that particular day not only did she show up in the right place at the right time but she actually saw that basket and she was curious as to the contents of that basket and when she opened the basket 
The baby began to cry at just the right moment to arouse her sympathy and her compassion and her feelings were so strong that she was able to go home and tell her father who hated these Hebrews, who had already issued a command to kill all those Hebrew baby boys. She was able to go home and convince her father, the king, to keep the child. It's not a coincidence that she showed up that day. It's not a coincidence that she was in the right place at the right time. God orchestrated it all. Do you not see the hand of God in this little story? You see, along the way, no doubt there were so many questions. Perhaps they were fearful at times. There was uncertainty as not knowing what to do and what would happen to their baby boy. But God had to be trusted in it. Jacobin had prayed and prayed and prayed. And she trusted God to save her baby boy and to use him. I'm almost through. Romans 8.28 says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the call according to His purpose. You see, her faith was rewarded. God took the evil plans of the Pharaoh to kill all the baby boys and worked it out for good. You see, God is going to use this baby boy some years down the road. The Pharaoh himself will feed and clothe and provide shelter for the same very baby boy who will grow up and God will use Moses to free the Israelites. It's amazing how God works. I don't know what's on your mind or heart this morning. I don't know what you're going through. No doubt there are things that all of us face in these days. Trust God. He has a plan. If you know God, Trust Him. Pray. Trust Him. Hebrews 11.6 tells us, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without faith, it's impossible for you or me to please God. Moses' parents are in the hall of faith in Hebrews chapter 11 because they trusted God. Do you trust Him this morning? Do you trust Him? How about your faith during this time? If God can take care of Moses as He laid in a basket, floating there on that Nile River, and work everything out, put it in the Pharaoh's daughter's heart to go and, at the, to the river at that time, and then to spot that basket, and to have that basket brought to her, and then for that baby to cry at just the right moment so she'd have compassion and take this baby home to her father. God worked all that out. He did. He did. This time, would you uh, bow in prayer with me? Uh, as we did last week, we will plan to uh, collect an offering, a love offering. If you're not prepared to give, that's certainly okay. We're not asking you uh, to do that. But uh, if you'd like to give... Uh, you certainly may do so. We'll have a couple of people come around in just a moment. If you'd like to drop something in, feel free to do so. If not, that's okay too. And if you didn't come prepared but you'd like to give, there is uh, our uh, P.O. box there in Barnwell. Our P.O. box is in Barnwell, just so you realize that is uh, correct on the sheet that we passed out, P.O. box 394 in Barnwell, South Carolina. This time I'm going to have a closing prayer, and then we'll have our ushers to come and collect offering. Would you bow in prayer with me, please? Father in heaven, thank you for these great stories of faith. As we said, it's one thing to talk about faith. It's one thing to say, oh, I have great faith. But Lord, we discover the kind of stuff we're made of when adversity comes. Our response to it, our reaction to it, that's when our faith is revealed. And Lord, in these times, might we prove to be faithful. Might it be revealed 
that our faith is built like the house on the rock. The winds may blow, the rains may fall, but the house remains and stands firm. Lord, might that be the description of our faith. Lord, thank you for each one that's here again today. Bless them, Lord, during these days. Give them peace. Lord, it does not honor You when we worry. It does not honor You, Lord, that as Your people when we go out and about and, and, and we uh, incite fear and worry among people. Lord, might we be the kind of Christian that reassures that our God is in control. Lord, perhaps we'll share the story of Jacobin and baby Moses in the basket as proof that our God reigns on this earth and in heaven. Lord, bless this offering that we're about to receive now. We love you, Lord, and we praise you, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.